This video is brought to you by Altium. In today's episode, you will learn how to make a new lead acid battery at home and this way you can save yourself a lot of money. This video is going to be very informative, especially for all those guys who want to start with the new lead acid battery making and repairing business because I am going to share with you each and every detail. Last year I made my first video on how to repair a lead acid battery at home and this video is about to hit 100k views. In this video I have talked about how to salvage and reuse the battery ground plates and the battery container. In this video I have also talked about different tools required for making a lead acid battery. So if you are just getting started with the lead acid batteries then I highly recommend watch my previous video because in this video I will not explain the things which I have already explained because in this video I am going to explain new things like for example how to speed up the battery making process how to increase the battery backup time and so many other things so without any further delay let's get started <laughs> Amazon links of the battery accessories are given in the description. These plates are far better than the plates I used in my previous video. The supplier even gave me 6 months warranty. When it comes to the battery plates selection always go for the best plates because the battery overall performance, backup and lifetime depends on the quality of these plates. So don't save a few dollars or rupees when you are purchasing the battery plates. Since I'm making this battery for my personal use, so I'm going to use more positive and ground plates. As you know, each cell has a voltage of around 2.1 volts when fully charged. So when 6 cells are connected in series, it will give about 12.6 volts. Each cell consists of multiple positive and ground plates connected in parallel to make one cell. As I need more backup time, so I will connect 11 positive cells in parallel and 12 ground plates in parallel. So in my case, every cell will have 23 plates. If you need more backup time, then go ahead and increase the number of positive and ground plates. When it comes to the ground plates, it's good to purchase new ground plates, but you can also purchase second-hand ground plates. In my case, I purchased some ground plates from the supplier and some ground plates I salvaged from my other battery. So I have all the positive plates and all the ground plates. Now let's start making the battery. You can see there is carbon coating on the plates, leads or contacts due to which it's going to be very hard to the welding or soldering because cleaning this with a sandpaper will take a lot of time when you have to clean more than 100 plates. So this time I'm going to use a grinder and this will definitely reduce the cleaning time. I did it for all the positive and ground plates. You can see the plates contacts are clean and now we can move on to the next step which is making leads of the ground plates. This video is sponsored by Ultium. Ultium Designer is the world's most trusted PCB design system. Ultium Designer enables engineers to effortlessly connect with every facet of the electronics design process. Over 35 years of innovation and development focused on a truly unified design environment makes it the most widely used PCB design solution. With Ultium Designer, you can create PCB designs with an intuitive and powerful interface that connects you to every aspect of the electronics design process. Route it your way through any angle, tune for delay push, slide and walk around faster than ever. Interact and collaborate with mechanical designers like never before in a photorealistic 3D design environment. 
If you want to get started with the Ultium Designer, you can click on the first link in the description. These are the tools which we're going to need for making the lead as a battery cells. I have already explained these tools in my previous video. I will provide a link in the description if you want to know in detail about all these tools and how to use them. I also purchased some lead from the local supplier. I will need this lead for making the battery cells and for making the battery terminals. First, let's make contacts of the salvaged ground plates. This technique is only used when you have salvage ground plates. If you have the new ground plates then you don't have to go through this process. Anyways, this is a simple process. All you need is a flat metal surface and a little bit of patience because your first few attempts may fail. You will need to be quick and give it enough time to get cooled and then cut it to the desired length. I did it for all the salvage ground plates. So all my ground plates are ready. The leads or contacts are cut to the desired length and I didn't do anything with the positive plates except cleaning the contacts. My positive and ground plates are ready and now let's move on to the next step which is making the cell. To make a cell we will need to insulate the positive plates from the ground plates and for this we use these separator sheets. All you need is simply place the positive plate in the separator sheet. Do it for all the positive plates. The ground plates contacts are going to be on one side and the positive plates contacts are going to be on the other side. This cell has 11 positive plates and 12 ground plates. We will have to make 5 more cells. So all these 6 cells are ready. Now we will make the terminals. The terminals making complete process I have already explained in my previous video. Finally, the hard work is done. All the six cells are ready and this is how we are going to place these cells inside the battery. This is the main positive terminal and this is the main ground terminal. All these six cells are going to be connected in series. Let me explain this in detail. The ground of the first cell is going to be connected with the positive of the second cell. The ground of the second cell is going to be connected with the positive of the third cell. The ground of the third cell is going to be connected with the positive of the fourth cell. The ground of the fourth cell is going to be connected with the positive of the fifth cell. The ground of the fifth cell is going to be connected with the positive of the sixth cell. The final terminal is the ground. As you can see all the ground contacts are 
connected together. Let's place these cells inside the battery container and build all the terminals. The tool I am using for building the terminals is one of the must have tools. If you want to know more about this tool then watch my previous video on how to make a lead acid battery. So our battery main positive and ground terminals are ready and now the final step is to properly close the battery lid. Finally, clean the battery. My battery is ready and now it's time to add the electrolyte. Watch my previous video on lead acid battery if you want to learn how to prepare electrolyte for your battery. After adding the electrolyte, I will charge the battery and then I will share with you the final test results. I have been charging this battery for the last few hours and it's still charging. It takes more time when you charge the battery for the first time. Let's check the voltage. The voltage is 13.4 volts and this is pretty amazing. The battery voltage will increase to around 15 volts when the battery is fully charged. So that's all for now. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.